friends welcome or welcome back to the channel if you're new here hi hello my name is maggie welcome to the mix match maggie channel um in this video we will be making something of my own creation gained a lot of inspiration bandanas are back in style if you haven't noticed um and so i have designed my own crochet bandana and I have a couple examples here of what we will be making. This is the first one that I made. It is, um, I made it while I was at work, funny enough. Um, so it is like a headband, kind of like, you know, you just throw on like a regular headband. Um, this is from Grimm's Boutique. I'll link her down below if you're interested. This is Pascal um, from the movie Tangled. Anyway, so it is a headband. And then it has a granny stitch that it's decreased and so it looks like a bandana or a hank uh, kerchief whatever you want to call it um but yeah i am super excited about this this one and this gray one were both made with um mandala or mandala yarn um i think this was a mandala cupcake and then i think this was left over from my hexagon cardigan i don't remember which colorway this is um but yeah I really like how this one goes from like bright pink to kind of like the ombre pink but yeah so there's this one so mandala these two are three weights um dk this one is a four weight in cotton this one was kind of a test I made it because I had black and orange and I was going to an Orioles game the Orioles are a baseball team and their colors are black orange and white so I did black and orange, and this is cotton. Um, I wouldn't recommend like 100% cotton, you know, like sugar and cream or peaches and cream, those cotton brands, um, because when this stretches um, around your head, it doesn't shrink back like acrylic does. So I would recommend acrylic yarn over cotton, unless you get maybe like a cotton acrylic blend. Um, in that case, that would be fine. And I would probably, I haven't made it in like an acrylic four weight, but I would stick to the three weight, especially for summer. It is hot as anything right now. Um, but yeah, so I would recommend three weight yarn, but let me tell you about the rest of the supplies you will need and then we can get started. All right, for materials you will need, um, possibly a measuring tape to measure your head or the head of the person that you're making it for. Um, or if you want to use a headband that you already have, like this one to kind of gauge off of, um, those are all options. You will need a crochet hook. I'm using a four and a half for a three weight or DK weight yarn. Um, for the four weight yarn, I did use a five, I believe. Um, but for the DK weight, I would do four or four and a half, depending on your tension. Um, this pattern is very customizable and it's also very beginner friendly. As long as you know single crochet, half double crochet, and double crochet and chaining, you are set. Um, it's nothing too complicated at all. Next you'll need a needle to sew in your ends. You can make this all in with like one yarn. Um, you'll need about 35 grams of DK weight. This is like a like 100 grams right here so I will not be using all of this I just wanted to use two colors so you guys can see um, the headband portion versus the granny square portion of it um, or the granny cluster portion of it and then for worst for worsted weight you will need approximately 80 grams so that was the black and orange one and then you will need um, scissors for cutting the yarn of course all right now that we know what we need let's get started To begin, you're going to decide how thick you want um, the headband portion because we'll be working this in rows this way um, instead of around like the circumference of your head. Um, so this one here is uh, seven half double crochets across and this one is nine double crochets across and it's a bit hard to tell from here but based off of this, this one is about about an inch and three quarters and then this one's about two two and a quarter inches uh, maybe about two inches um, 
in width. I think I'm going to do one that's probably closer to this size, just for speed and for the sake of this video, but that is completely up to you. Um, the other one, the black and orange one, was also nine half double crochets, so that is completely up to you on how wide, but I would do at least five stitches, so we are going to chain that amount. So I'm going to do seven half double crochets across, so I'm going to chain eight. So whatever number you choose, um, add one chain to that. So in order to begin, we're going to start with a slip knot. So you're going to put the tail in front of your hand. The yarn's going to fall off the back of your hand. You're going to grab it, wrap it around your two fingers, flip your hand, and then take your hook, put it under the first string, under the first loop, grab the second loop, pull it out. You're going to kind of do a twisting motion, and then you're going to slide everything off your hand and pull your tail. And then you're just going to pull both ends to tighten the loop on your hook. Next we're going to chain however many chains we need for our headband for the width, so I think I'm going to do five. So you're going to wrap the yarn around the hook, pull through, and there's one. Wrap the yarn around the hook, that's two, three, four, five, and then I'm going to add one, and then that'll be my starting chain. Now from here you can either do half double crochet or single crochet. It's completely up to you and however much patience you have. In my opinion, single crochet takes a bit longer than half double crochet in building the length that you need. I will be doing half double crochet. Um, so I'm going to yarn over, insert my hook into the second chain from the hook. Yarn over again, pull through, yarn over, pull through all three loops. I'll do that again, yarn over, insert into the next chain. I'm doing it into the back loop. If you find it difficult to put in the back loop, totally fine. Just do it into one of the loops. Yarn over, pull through, yarn over, pull through three. You're going to do that until the end of your chain. However many chains that you have. So in my case I did 5 plus 1, so I should just have 5 half double crochets. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Alright, we're going to chain 1. So whether you're doing um, half double crochet or single crochet, um, it doesn't matter. So if you had six stitches or six chains, you'll have five stitches for half double crochet or single crochet. Um, and then the chain ones do not count as a stitch. So you're going to chain one and flip. On the first and last stitch, you're just going to go through both loops, so yarn over insert into both loops, yarn over, pull through, yarn over, pull through two. But for the middle ones, so everything except the first and your last stitch, you're going to do it in the back loop, and that kind of gives it its stretch. Um, that kind of makes it like that accordion look. So looking at it from the top, you're going to see these little V's right here, and you're going to do it into this back loop, right here. It's the same way you did the, the half double crochet before. So again, you're going to put it through that loop, not both, not just the front loop, the back loop. So yarn over, insert into the back loop. Yarn over, pull through, yarn over, pull through three. One more time, 
or until you get to the last stitch. So I have four now, so my last one will be this loop, or this stitch right here, and I'm going to do it under both loops. I just find that it gives it a, a cleaner look, um, and it makes it easier um, for when you have to do the granny stitch into these stitches on the edge. So we're going to repeat that row again. So I chained one, flipped, half double crochet under both loops for the first stitch. And then for this, this is the next stitch, you're going to go under the back loop. going all the way across. At the last stitch we're going to have double crochet under both loops. There we go. And you're going to keep doing this until you reach um, however long you need it to be to fit around your head but not completely like stretch it a little bit as it's going around your head because it is you do want it to stay on your head um, so see that it does stretch like it will stretch to your head so I would do like like an inch or so mm, probably more than that so my head is 22 inches and I stretched this out just a little bit, but it's at about 10 inches right now, or it'll be double, so 20 inches. So that's how long I made it initially, and it was about 20 inches. So it will stretch to your head. Um, you can always try it on and, or just, you know, like wrap it around your head a little bit just to see like, oh, I think I need one more row or one less row. But yeah, so for the DK one, I did count how many rows this one has. It has about 44 rows if you do the half double crochet. I'm not sure about the single crochet. I didn't do the single crochet um, for the headband of this one, but you are definitely able to do that if you like single crochet or look how it, like how it looks better. Um, but yeah, so go ahead and make this and I will meet back up with you when we're ready to connect the headband. All right, friends, we are back. I have crocheted 43 rows, uh, and that number is going to differ for you um, depending on the hook you used and the size yarn you used, everything like that. Next, we're going to connect the band. So you're going to take the row that you started on, the first row, and you're going to butt it up against the row that you're working on. You're going to chain one. And you're going to go through both of the loops on the f first piece and then both of the loops on the first row you did. So essentially that'll be the chain that you did at the very beginning. And then you're going to yarn over and pull through everything. So essentially you slip stitch in them together. So we're going to do that again. Make sure this isn't too tight because if not it'll kind of like pucker up. Um, so two stitches on this side, two stitch, not two stitches, the two loops on this side, the two loops on that side, and pull through everything. Keep going all the way across. So however many stitches you did, so like me, I did five half double crochets. You should slip stitch five times. All right, so there we go. So now it's one continuous loop. So it looks like a headband. And if you're going to continue with the same color, you're going to, um, I usually like slip stitch over a stitch just so you're not starting right on the rib, one or two, just like into that first row um, of stitches. But if you are not, and you are changing colors, 
you are going to um, just pull the yarn through and then cut it. And then pull it tight. So there's your headband. If you want, you can flip it inside out. Doesn't completely matter, and you can sew in your ends now too. If you'd like to do that, I usually just do it at the end. And then we will get started on the next section. All right, so I have grabbed my next color. Um, if you are continuing with your color, like I said, you're gonna slip stitch over to like the first row, like this loop right here or something. So this is the seam right here. So you'll be, you'd be coming from here and then you're just gonna slip stitch over. So I'm going to insert my hook into here, make a slip knot. I now realize that these colors are peripatibus colors. It's orange and teal. I'm going to pull the loop through Two. And um, if you're continuing with this color, you're going to chain three with us. All right, and then we are going to double crochet. We're going to be doing double crochet clusters in every other row. So this is a row, that's a row, that's a row. Let's get a little closer. So that's a row. Sorry, this is a row and then this is a row, and then this is a row. It's nothing exact, but all right, let's do the first cluster. So into the same loop, double crochet, and we demonstrated double crochet as well. Yarn over, insert into the loop, yarn over, pull through, yarn over, pull through two, yarn over, pull through two. And then you're going to, I kind of just worked over my toe just for that stitch, um, but I'll sew it in at the end. So, all right, so that was this row. Then we're gonna skip this row and we're gonna go into this row. So this one conveniently has a loop or a hole right there. So that's what we're gonna work into. So double crochet, yarn over, insert into the hole yarn over, pull through, yarn over, pull through two, yarn over, pull through two. So each cluster is going to have three double crochets in the same stitch. For this one, the three double crochets counted as a double crochet, or sorry, these three chains started as a double crochet. So one, two, three. And you're not going to do spaces in between, I just don't think it looks as nice, but you're more than welcome to. Okay, so we worked into this one, skip this one, go into this one. This one also has a convenient hole. So we're going to yarn over, insert into the hook, yarn over, pull through, yarn over, pull through two, yarn over, pull through two, and two more. And at any point, I'm going too fast, you're more than welcome to pause the video or down in the settings, there's uh, something that says speed and you can slow it down or speed it up if I'm going too slow for you. All right, and then we're going to skip a row, going into the next row. Skip a row, go into the next row. Skip a row, go into the next row. Skip a row, go into the next row. All right, and we're gonna continue that until we get 
all the way back to the other side. So continue that until we get back to the beginning, but do not connect. Stop at, you know, here. So this is the where you started. So stop around here, whichever row you stop on. It might be the last row, it might be the second to last row, it doesn't matter. Um, you didn't do anything wrong with that, but we will be back in just a second. All right, friends, we are back at the beginning. So as you can see, I have shell stitches or granny clusters all the way around. I'm gonna do one more, so skip, and then go into this one right here. And this will be my last one for this row. Yours might end a row back or a row ahead of mine. Maybe not ahead of mine, but a row back, depending on if you did like an odd number versus an even number of rows. Doesn't matter, not super important. This will be at the back of your head. So like if you have hair, it'll be like at the back of your neck underneath all your hair. So this part doesn't fully matter. Um, but yeah, so that's the end of row one. So this is what it should look like. Minus all the ends to be woven in. All right, and then we would then chain either two or three, depending on how tight your chains are. I chain two. And then we're going to turn our work. So we're not going to connect it or anything to this one. We're just going to turn the work, chain two, turn the work. It could be three, depending on how tight your chains are. And then we're going to granny cluster in all of the spaces in between the granny clusters. So, so you double crochet in here. And we're going to skip over the show and three double crochet into this space, skip this show, three double crochet into this space, so that's what it's going to look like. So there's your chain two, and then there's your shell spaces, or your shell stitches in between the other shell spaces. And you're going to continue that all the way back until you get to the other side, and I'll meet up with you there. Okay, we are back at the other end. So I just have one more shell stitch to do. Not shell stitch, granny cluster. You know what I mean. And then instead of a chain two like we started with, we're going to do a double crochet into, it's gonna be the top of the chain three. For the rest of the rows, it will be the top of a double crochet, but since this is the beginning of that row, it is a chain two. And then we're gonna start again. We're gonna chain two or three, depending on how tight your chains are. We're gonna turn your work, and we're going to repeat the previous row by doing the clusters in each of the spaces. So you have your chain two or three that's coming out of the top of the double crochet from the previous row. And then the double crochet clusters or granny clusters in between the other granny clusters. And you're going to continue this all the way back around and I'll meet up with you one more time before we just repeat this row and I'll show you one more time how to finish off the row and start the next one and then I will see you at the very end all right friends we are back at the end of the row again so I'm going to do one more granny cluster. And then I'm going to double crochet in the top, in either your second or third chain, whatever one is at the top. We're just going to double crochet in that. 
So that's what it should look like. And it will start tapering in. That's how you're going to get the point. As you can see, it tapers in. And I'll show better pictures um, probably at the beginning of the video that show better that it's decreasing and how it looks on your head, of course. But So that's what it'll look like. So again, to start the row, you're going to chain two or three, depending on how tight. And it is going to be, you don't want it to like hang out, like the chains to like be really loose, because um, you do want it to be kind of stiff. But if you want it more flowy, then you're more than welcome to do three chains for the rest of it. Um, so chain two or three, and then go straight into the space. You're going to keep repeating these rows until you get to a very <laughs> narrow number and that number is going to be one so when you get down to the last we'll say the last two shells or the last two clusters you're going to chain two or three you're going to do one last cluster in the last space and then a double crochet in the last one and then i'll meet you back when you're finished that so the row should go by faster and faster um, because you are decreasing and there's going to be less clusters to do as you increase in rows. So I will see you guys when you get down to one cluster. Alright friends, we are back and I have two more rows I think left to do. This is the last gray cluster. And then double crochet. So this is what it should look like. So it should have a nice decrease. Here's the band, headband part of it. So you are more than welcome to just um, like cut the yarn and tie it off here. And that's what I did, I believe, with one of them. I think it was the pink one. Yeah, so I just ended it with the chain two cluster half double crochet or double crochet. But I also ended this one with to kind of make it more of a point. Um, I'll show you what I did. So you're more than welcome to cut the yarn, pull it through your hook, weave in your ends and be done. Um, or you can do it this way. I think this one, this way doesn't look too bad. There's nothing wrong with this way. Um, it does come to a peak, but if you want it to look a bit more pointy, I guess, you're going to chain two like you do usually for the rows. Um, you're gonna do you're gonna do essentially three double crochet together. So you're gonna start a double crochet in here. You're gonna keep the final two loops on there. Then you're gonna start another double crochet. So you have three loops on your hook, and then another double crochet just in this space. And then you're going to pull through all four. So it's, it gives it a bit more of a point if you want it to be a softer end, then you're more than welcome to just end it after the last double crochet and the single cluster right there. 
So I think for this one, I think I'm going to go back. I think I like how it looked before. So with that, we are going to pull it through, snip, and then with our needle, weave in the two ends that we have left. If you continue, continue using the same color throughout, um, you should only have two ends to sew in where you started the band and then right here at the end. But if you changed color, it's going to be two here at the start of the band and the end of the band and then where you change the color, so right here and then at the very end. that one you shouldn't need to block it or anything you might need a just a weird loop that's okay And there we have it. Zoom this out. There is the full bandana all done in the colors of your choosing. I somehow ended up making it look like either a carrot or the colors of Perry the Platypus, um, depending on your mood. I'm hungry, but also thinking about Perry the Platypus. So it's a carrot or Perry the Platypus. So. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. Um, if you make one of these, feel free to tag me at MixMatchMaggie. I'm on Instagram, Facebook, um, and here on YouTube. And yeah, I would love to see what color combos you guys do and what yarns you use. And yeah, so I hope you enjoyed and I'll see you guys next time. Bye!